Are you concerned about your security online? Well, I think everybody is, especially in this day and age. In this video, I'm gonna go over some steps and some techniques and things you can do to help secure your online information from prying eyes and unwanted access. So stick around because at the end, I'm gonna give you the uh, ways that I go about doing it. And I think you'll find them extremely helpful. So let's get to it. Hey, what's up everybody, Robert here again. So we talk a lot about the different accounts you need to configure your devices, uh, get them synchronized with your home, be able to have remote access to open doors and open garages and unlock things and turn lights on and off. But one thing that we haven't really talked about is the security of those things. And it's important uh, to understand, you know, the access you need and how it needs to be secured. Uh, it's a very, very important aspect of it. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some things that are gonna be helpful to you in understanding how you can secure your accounts. So the first thing you want to do is when you're setting up, like let's say your Philips Hue account or your GoV account, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you set a strong password. Don't use the simple ones. Don't use the ones that everybody uses. Pick something that's a little complicated, but yet try to make it easy to remember. Make sure you include um, some capital letters. Make sure you include numbers, special characters like question marks, exclamation points, the at symbol. Uh, there's a lot of them that you can choose from uh, to use in your passwords. That's probably the first and most fundamental setting that you can do to secure your accounts is a strong password. You don't want to make it easy for someone to hack it, okay? Number two, you wanna look in those accounts for a setting called two-factor authentication. The two-factor authentication is a method in which it'll send you a text message when you wanna to try to access the account from let's say an unknown location or an unknown device. Uh, text message is the easiest way to do it. Uh, it's going to be uh, the simplest way for you to set up too, because obviously you don't have to remember anything special because I'm sure you know your own phone number and you carry your phone around with you everywhere. So it makes it easy to receive those text messages if you're trying to log in. Like let's say you're over at a friend's house and you're using their computer and you need to log in to check your cameras. Well, you can do that, but you don't wanna leave your password on their computer, first off. Uh, second, you don't wanna just be able to just log in without having an extra layer of protection. So the two-factor authentication is uh, a way that you can get a text message that you'll put a code into the website or your app that authenticates that it's actually you. So that way it's not gonna have any kind of unauthorized access. And speaking of uh, account sharing, that's a feature that a lot of software services and subscriptions and things like that are now implementing to where you can securely give a family member or a friend access to a particular aspect of, let's say, your garage door or your lights. You can share cameras through Google Home. Like for example, on my MyQ video keypad, I have specific pin numbers assigned to specific people. So when a family member comes over to the house, they can use their code to enter the home. You don't wanna give them like the master code, so that way they can't change anything, but you can give them access. And with the camera situation, um, you're able to give them remote view capabilities of let's say a specific camera so let's say you go on vacation and you want a family member to watch your home you can give them permission to view those cameras while you're away so that way they can kind of keep an eye on things as to what's going on you can also give access to door locks um, there's codes that you can provide for let's say your front door your back door similar to how the garage works uh, so it's just important to know like who's going to be coming in, why they're going to be coming in. Uh, if you can set time limits for the access code, that's even better. So for example, uh, recently we had our 
heater go out. So the HVAC guy that we use, um, we've known him for a long time and he's done a lot of work for us. So I trust him. So when he came over to take a look at the problem, I gave him a code and he entered the house through the garage door and I set that code to expire in two days. So he had plenty of time to come and go as he needed during those times we were at work and then the code automatically expired. So I didn't have to worry about that code being like available continuously. So he can't come back a week later and enter the house. It's not gonna work. So those are important aspects to keep in mind of when you do assign guest access to anything, whether it be a door lock, a camera, you wanna see if you have the ability to limit how long that access is available. Now, some access, like our children, we the code's available all the time. They can use it whenever they want. So there are times when obviously there's certain people you'll want to have you know access whenever they need it. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind and, and, and make a list of maybe your friends and family who specifically need that kind of access. Um, if there's like a cleaning service you have come over, you can assign a code for them. And so for example, let's go back to the MyQ again. I can set a code that only works, say, Monday through Friday from this time to this time. So that way, even though it's on every week, it's only certain days of the week and certain hours of those days. So again, the more granular control that you can have, the better it is for you and your security. Now, I will have to say, unfortunately, not all companies give you that type of control and access capability. Um, I think more and more companies are moving in that direction, which is great, but not everybody has that kind of control yet. So when you're investigating like a smart home device, look into the service too, not just the piece of equipment, but look into their service. Like how is their service set up? Do you have to create an account? Is it something where you have um, passwords, pin codes, can you share it? All those different things. So you just wanna kinda of check that out. So the method that I use for my two-factor authentication is a authenticator app. I personally use the Google Authenticator. Uh, it's free. All you need is a Gmail account to download it to your Android phone. Um, you could also download it to an iPhone. So if you have an iOS, it doesn't have to be an Android phone. Um, it doesn't require any account to actually use the app, which is nice. Um, you just install it on your phone. And so the process is, um, for example, let's look at the Google side of things. You could go into Google, set up the Authenticator app. It displays a QR code. You take your phone, you scan that code, and what that does is it registers your phone with your account so that when you go to log in somewhere, you don't have to get a text message. You can use the Authenticator app. And the Authenticator app is available offline even. So it can work even if you don't have that internet connection. It actually adds another layer of security because um, even though text messages are moving to the new RCS standard, which has end-to-end -end encryption, um, it's still early on and a lot of companies are not using it. Technically, a regular text message over your cellular lines can be intercepted. There's ways that people can trick you to give them the code, uh, access your phone. So the Authenticator app adds one extra layer that it's not an actual text message. No one can intercept any information because the information's on your phone. So for example, if you get a new phone, you have to reset up your Authenticator app. Now, Google has since, um, over the past few months, implemented where you can actually uh, back up the keys for your Authenticator app. So for example, if I get a new phone, then I can sign back into my Google Authenticator app and I can choose to have it re-import my two-factor codes back to my phone. So that way I don't have to go through manually setting each one up. 
Because if you're like me and you have literally a list of different websites that you use that app for, it can take a long time to get set back up. And in some cases, uh, it's not that easy uh, because they don't want the ability to just go in and randomly reset it and where anyone can you know, change your code and then set it up on their phone to where they can get access. So they make it a little bit difficult, which is good. That's what you want uh, to have happen if it's not you, right? But if you're just switching phones or something, then you want to have some easy way of migrating that information. Now, you don't have to sync it to the cloud. They do have a way of doing it offline. From your new phone, you scan a code on your old phone, which will then send over the actual keys to all the different codes that you have stored. So that way you don't have to rebuild them. So that's another easy way of doing it. There are other applications out there like Microsoft has a Microsoft Authenticator. Um, it actually works extremely well, especially with Windows type applications. It makes it really convenient because you can sign in with your account. And what happens on Windows is when you go to log in somewhere, it allows you to click, yes, it's me, but then it gives you a number that it displays that you have to type the number in uh, in order to access, or you can just, sometimes you can just tap it on the phone. It depends on how it's set up. You just tap the number on your phone and it authenticates you on the website. So you're not typing anything on the computer, which eliminates any kind of like key loggers or things like that. Maybe that um, even though the codes, they change every 30 seconds. So if someone's going to see your code, they're going to be pretty quick about it. I just want to give you a quick little rundown of some of the security aspects of when you create your accounts, what you need to do. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please hit me up in the comments section. Um, there's also another aspect is um, you can use a VPN and one VPN that I highly recommend is NordVPN. It's software so you can install the app on your phone, you can install the app on your computer and it basically creates a secure connection through the internet. So none of your information is transmitted without being encrypted. So it can't be stolen. Any transactions you do, any websites you visit, it's all going through that encrypted tunnel. So I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description and uh, you wanna go check that out because they've been a leader in mobile VPN technology and it just works fantastic. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and You'll definitely want to check out this video here about the MyQ video keypad subscription.